Twitter came to the White House and obviously there's a lot of different issues with Twitter that have an influence on politics and society and all of that. Lots I guess they could talk about with Donald Trump and the White House. Instead, they talked about one thing in particular. So this is according to this Washington Post had a source inside of the meeting who said, a large percentage of the meeting, which included senior White House officials such as Trump's social media director, Dan Scavino, was spent addressing the subject of real Donald Trump's follower count. The president stated his belief that he had lost some of his roughly 59 million followers in anti-Trump, anti-conservative Twitter purges, according to a source familiar with the meeting. So you have arguably one of like the two or three most important social media platforms in the world, which obviously has had a huge impact on politics around the world. For some time, you have the CEO Jack Dorsey in the White House. And Trump is like, why am I losing Twitter followers? And that's apparently what a large percentage of the whole meeting was about. And Trump, he did bring evidence to this meeting. He said that he had heard from fellow conservatives who had lost followers for unclear reasons as well. Oh. And so that's what he said. Um, here is how the CEO of Twitter responded to the concerns of the most powerful man in the world. Dorsey, this is Jack Dorsey, CEO of Twitter, had to explain to the president that like other Twitter users, real Donald Trump periodically loses followers when the site deletes fake or bot accounts. Dorsey even said he himself had lost followers as a result of Twitter's efforts to delete fake accounts. By the way, in one of those purges, every once in a while, Twitter updates the way that they scan for fake accounts and then they get rid of those people. And sometimes really embarrassing for certain high profile people yeah. how many they lose. In one of them, by the way, you have Donald Trump, current president, you have Barack Obama, former president. Trump lost 200,000 followers, Obama lost 2 million. And yet I've never seen a right winger talking about shadow banning and you know Twitter like censoring politicians mention the fact that it was 10 times as impactful on Barack Obama as it was on Donald Trump. But White House meeting, that's what he's well, the concerned The first with. thing they would have to admit is that Obama had more followers in the first place, which again, it's true. If I'm the president of the United States, first of all, I'm not sure maybe there's a maybe there's a real political um, world changing reason to have a meeting with the Twitter CEO in the White House. About other things. Uh -huh. I, the whole time I was trying to figure out what else should they be talking about in this meeting, and I came up with nothing because mm -hmm. there's probably more important things to do from that desk. Number one. Uh, after that, so let's talk about my followers. It is a good chance, Trump, that there's people who said, I'm sick of hearing this guy's BS. I'm tired of reading his exclamation points. I'm tired of seeing his all caps tweets early in the morning. Yeah. I'm seeing it on news sources anyway. I might as well get rid of this guy. There's people who do that too, by the way. Yeah. You know, There's people who get offended by the things you say and say, you know what, I'm tired of following this guy. Uh, I need to cleanse my life. It happens. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people on other platforms like Facebook say, hey, you guys, I'm taking a social media hiatus. I'm gone for the month. Don't get offended. They're doing it for their own, for their health. Yeah. So there's many reasons people may get rid of it, but of course, in broad numbers, it's the fake account thing. Um, it's not embarrassing, calm down, everybody's mm -hmm. got some. That's the way it works. I can tell when they start following me. Mm -hmm. I see them, they have zero followers or they have two, or they have the Twitter eggs, which aren't eggs anymore. But it's pretty obvious, just relax. Yeah. Nobody is worried about this except for you. The other things that you're doing is what you need to start worrying about. Yeah, exactly. Look, people do buy followers. That that is a yeah, thing that yeah. has happened. Uh, it, it seems like it's harder since there's been multiple years of efforts to, to stop that from happening. Um, but then also bot networks will simply uh, follow you and spread your content for propagandistic reasons. There's <laughs> there's all sorts of people inside of the US and internationally that, that like what Donald Trump is saying because of the damage that it's doing and so they help to amplify that. And so he loses some followers as a result of that. Doesn't mean that, that he was going out and buying them, he just happened to get them. But um, I compared the effect that it had on Obama and Trump. And uh, I'm not the only person who is interested in the disparity in followers between Obama and Trump. Uh, Trump is too. Uh, Trump has apparently repeatedly griped to associates about how Obama has had more Twitter followers than he has, even though by Trump's own assessment, he is so much better at Twitter than Obama is. Uh, it's not surprising at all. I, and, and by the way, I'm not just saying as a progressive Democrat, it's not surprising Donald Trump is, is terrible, no. Donald Trump specifically tailors his message to hard right 
generally American people. There are some, you know, like hard right, alt right, white supremacists in Europe that probably like his message too. But it, by its very nature, is not going to travel very well. Whereas Obama, whether you like it or not, whether you think he's deserved or not, has presented himself as sort of a beacon of rationality and hope and whatever the other branding is. That is appealing in a lot of different countries, which is why I'm sure Obama has a much bigger following outside of the US. And that's why he has like close to double the followers and that, things, that Trump does. There's things that Obama would say that people are interested in reading. That they're like, oh, I wonder what Obama would say about this. Whether you like him or not, whether or not you're a progressive Democrat or you're some guy in Australia, you're like, oh, I wonder what the former president of the United States has to say about this. I should follow him on Twitter. Then every time he says something, I can see it. No one's curious about what Trump might say about something, about mm. uh, about some disaster outside of the fact. I wonder what hate he's gonna throw that way. Yeah. We already know it's gonna be hateful. We already know it's gonna be over the top and bombastic. So there's no more surprises left in mm. store. There's a certain number of people who just don't want your toxicity in their life. Simple. Yeah, I don't even know why I follow him. Uh, but I do. I don't. Uh, well, yeah, I'm not, I, I probably I, shouldn't. I, I'm, I, I followed, this with the POTUS. Handle. I'm sorry. The POTUS handle on Twitter. I follow previous previous presidents, mm -hmm. and it continues and it jumps to the next president. That one I follow of his, but um, his personal one, I I can't do it. I mean, the thing is, I see it all the time anyway. You don't have to follow him. Is the is the easy part? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So look, uh, outside of the direct concerns of Donald Trump, I do think that this is important. This conversation that that Twitter had with Donald Trump because of uh, the overall conservative messaging around social media and the supposed victimization. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching this clip from the damage report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full damage report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.